Welcome to this video on the quadratic formula. Let's begin. In the previous sections, we have learned different ways to solve quadratic equations. For example, if I have the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 2, I can set the function equal to 0 and solve for x. Let's review the methods we've learned so far doing this. So one method that we learned is factoring. So take a minute and see if you can use factoring to solve this quadratic equation. Another method that we have used is completing the square, which once we do that, then we can use the square root method. So again, take a minute, pause this video, try both of these methods, and then see if you can figure out what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two different methods. Well, let's look at the first method. If we use factoring here, the problem with this is we don't have any two numbers that multiply up to negative 2 and add up to positive 2. So if we were just using factoring, we would have to be, um, we would be left with this answer of prime. So the good thing about factoring is that it is relatively fast. The bad thing about it is that it only gives us rational solutions. So if there is a real solution that is irrational, Factoring will not give it to us, and it will definitely not generate complex solutions. So remember, a complex number is something in the form a plus bi. So anything that has an imaginary component, um, this method cannot be used. Then we have our square root method, or completing the square. So I've done that here, and you can see that we do have a real solution. However, it is an irrational solution because it contains plus or minus the square root of 3. So again, the advantage is that this method can generate irrational solutions, as you can see here, and of course, complex solutions if needed. But the disadvantage, as I'm sure you're aware, after having learned this method, is that it can be very slow and time consuming. And just like any process that has a lot of steps, right, the more steps you have, the more likely you are to make mistakes. So is there any other method I could use to solve quadratic equations? And the answer is yes, and that um, method is called the quadratic formula. So we can use this to find the zeros, roots, or solutions of quadratic equations. And you need to memorize this formula. So the formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I learned a really cute way to memorize this. So it goes like this. A negative boy couldn't decide whether to go to a radical party. But he was square, so he missed out on four awesome chicks. The party wasn't over until 2 a.m. So you can use that cute little story to tell yourself to memorize this equation. So let's do a few examples. Example 1, we have our function um, f of x equals x squared minus 5x minus 13. Okay, so we want to find the roots, zeros, or... Um, uh, solutions of this equation. So first we set it equal to 0. So that is our first step. We write the equation in st standard form and we set it equal to 0 and you can see that we've done that right there. So the next step says to identify a, b, and c. Well a is the number in front of x squared. Remember we're looking for a x squared plus b x plus c. So since there isn't a number there we can see that a is 1. We can see that b is negative 5. And we can see that c is negative 13. Equipped with this information, we can now go on and write our equation. Again, x is equal to, uh, sorry, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now all we have to do is uh, substitute the values a, b, and c. So the easiest mistake to make with that sort of thing is just to get confused with your signs. So notice that we have a negative b here, but b itself is negative. So that's going to look like this, negative, negative 5. Okay? Then we have plus or minus the square root of negative 5 quantity squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 13. And we're going to put all of that over 2 times 1. So let's evaluate this piece by piece. What is negative negative 5? Well, the two negatives cancel out, and they give us positive 5. So we have 5 plus or minus. Well, what is negative 5 quantity squared? Negative 5 quantity squared is positive 25. What is negative 4 times 1 times negative 13? 
That gives us positive 52. And then we put all of this over 2. So let's keep going and simplify this. 25 plus 52. What is that? Well, it's 77. So I have 5 plus or minus the square root of 77 all over 2. Oh, and this should say x, not 5. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, sometimes the online uh, programs that are um, for your online homework will ask you to write this as two separate values. So let me show you how to do that. So we have our positive solution. So we have 5 plus the square root of 77 all over 2. And then we can separate it with a comma. And then we have 5 minus the square root of 77 all over 2. And of course, you could type that into a calculator and get a decimal approximation. However, pretty much always you want the exact solution, and the exact solution is going to still contain that radical. So let's do another example. In this example, we have 2x squared equals 5x minus 4. So the first thing we need to do is rewrite the equation in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. To do that, I'm going to move the 5x and the negative 4 over to the other side. So we end up with 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So we have a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to positive 4. Now we can just plug it into the formula. So I have negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. So we have uh, minus a negative, that becomes plus a positive. So we have positive 5 plus or minus the square root of, well, negative 5 quantity squared is positive 25. Then we have 4 times 2 times 4, that is 32. And this is all over 4. Well, 25 minus 32 is probably going to give us a negative number because 32 is larger than 25. So we have 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 all over 4. Do you remember what we have to do when we have the square root of a negative number? Well, we have to rewrite it in terms of i. So we have x is equal to 5 plus or minus i square roots of 7 all over 4. Now, if you're doing any kind of work where you want the two solutions, you can write the plus solution as 5 plus i root 7 over 2, and you can write the minus solution as 5 minus i square root of 7 over 4. Let's do another example. Here, again, we have a quadratic equation, but we don't yet have it um, in a form such that 0 is on one side. So I'm going to subtract 4x squared from both sides. going to add 3x to both sides, and then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So 13x squared minus 4x squared is 9x squared. 9x plus 3x is 12x. 3 plus 1 is 4. So I have 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 equals 0. Now you can actually do this um, with factoring. Um, this is actually a perfect square trinomial. However, um, we are going to use this particular problem to practice the AC method. So, I mean, sorry, not the AC method, the, um, the quadratic formula. So we have A is equal to 9, B is equal to 12, and C is equal to 4. So we have negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 quantity squared minus 4 times 9 times 4 all over 2 times Okay, so let's see if we can simplify this. So we have negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 4 times 9 times 4. Well, 4 times 9 times 4 is actually also 144. And then we have 2 times 9, that is 18. Okay, so notice 144 minus 144 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. So we actually only get a single solution, negative 12 over 18. And of course, we can reduce this. They're both divisible by 6. So 12, negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So we have a single solution. 
So before I end this video, I want to take a minute and go through these three examples. I picked them deliberately because they give you three different possibilities. So example one has two solutions, two unique solutions. Um, this is two unique real solutions. Okay, and again, they're unique. They're different from each other. Okay, um, this one has two solutions, but they're complex. So this has zero or no real solutions. And this problem right here has exactly one real solution. Okay, and sometimes you might hear this called a double root. Um, so if you were to factor this, you would see that you actually get the same factor twice. Okay, so again, the three possibilities when you factor a um, quadratic, you can get two real solutions that are unique. You can get no real solutions. Again, both of these um, answers are complex, meaning they contain imaginary numbers. So if I made you, if I asked you to graph this on the xy plane, you can't do it. You can't graph complex or imaginary numbers on the real plane. Okay, and so then the last one is a single root. And we'll talk about what that means graphically in a future video.